Hey guys, it's Brant with Steven, Hello. and we're back to do a solo album review. This is Ace's solo album review, so we're just going to get right into it. So let's go ahead and get started. Start talking about Ace Frehley 1978 solo album. Oh, Stanley. Smiley. The Kiss Albums, won by each of the four Kiss stars on Casablanca Records and Tapes. Ace's solo album was produced by Ace Frehley and Eddie Kramer. It was engineered by Eddie Kramer and Bob Freeman, assisted by Eric Block and Don Honerberg. It was recorded in June and July of 1978, two-month period. It was released on September 18, 1978, along with other three band members' solo efforts. Basic tracks were recorded at the Colgate Mansion in Sharon, Connecticut. Additional recording of overdubs and mixing was done at Plaza Sound Studios in New York City. The Colgate Mansion is a huge historical home in which Eddie and Ace set Anton's drums in the middle of the staircase and they recorded the sound from several points. They also used the different ballroom sized rooms in the mansion with hardwood floors and carpeted floors to record Ace's amps and acoustic guitars and to get whatever reverb that they wanted to get. Ace and Eddie spent the day and the night at the mansion while the basic tracks were being recorded. Eddie recorded over 30 reels of 2 inch tape that weighed over 400 pounds that had to be moved to New York City when they relocated the Plaza Sound. Plaza Sound was originally constructed in the 30s by NBC at a cost of what would be $2.5 million in today's money. Plaza Sound was above the Radio City Music Hall and Ace's studio was just down the hall from where the Rockettes rehearsed. When the Rockettes would take a break, so would Ace. Several songs on the album were actually intended for Rock and Roll Over but weren't used. The funny thing is that Ace didn't have any songs on Rock and Roll Over. Ace used a handful of musicians. He played all the electric and acoustic and lead guitars. He even played bass on six of the nine tracks. He also played a guitar synthesizer. Other than himself, Ace only used eight other musicians and singers on the album. I'll talk about who they are when I get to the songs that they play on. In chart action, the album peaked at 26 on January the 13th, 1979 and spent 23 weeks on the charts. Ace's album is the highest selling of all the solo albums. The album was certified gold and platinum by the RIAA on October 2nd, 1978. The packaging basically followed the scenario that the other three solo albums did. The iconic cover was painted by Eraldo Caraguti. All four solo albums had the same marketing theme and was dedicated to the other three band members. Included inside was a dust sleeve with all four solo album covers on it, a poster that formed a larger poster when added to posters from the other albums, and a merch form. Let's get to the most important thing on this album. Let's get to the songs. We're going to start with track number one, Rip It Out. Rip It Out was written by Ace Frehley and Larry and Sue Kelly. Ace plays all guitars, Anton Figg plays the drums, backing vocals was by Larry Kelly. Larry Kelly was in one of Ace's pre-Kiss bands, Magic People, around 1968 as a lead singer. Now, Rip It Out to me is just phenomenal. I mean, it is an awesome way to start an album. Um, and, you know, like I said, you go from Rocket Ride, the natural progression is into Rip It Out. And I love Rip It Out. I love the drum solo in it. Anton Fig is a beast. Yeah, and the way his really drums good. just sound on this album, they just nailed it. And when I found out that it was actually recorded in this mansion, and I post a picture in uh, in this of the, of the staircase they recorded the drums in, it's just a beast of a song. The guitar is great. It's not one of my favorite songs on the album, though. I actually like... Uh, several other songs better than this one, but it is a great way to start an album, so I scored a seven. Okay. Um, so I'd had a little bit of experience with Ace's solo album beforehand, um, but I didn't remember a whole lot of it. 
Um, and I think this is actually one of the songs I kind of just skipped past because I went straight to... <clears throat> I did my thing where I go to songs that I think it has a cool name. Mm -hmm. So I went to like Ozone and Snowblind and stuff and I basically left everything else in the dust. Um, but I, I really enjoy how the guitar is recorded on this song as well as most of the album. And um, you can tell um, that it's definitely not Peter throwing <laughs> those drums because I don't think he could... I mean... I'll just say, I don't think Peter could ever do anything like that. Even if he, if he did, he'd have to focus really, really hard. I don't think it would come natural to Peter. I think Peter could be taught to do something like that and be instructed or have it written for him like the drum part for Detroit Rock City was. Yeah. You know, yeah. Bob Ezrin basically wrote that part for him. But I don't think it'd be something that would naturally flow out of him the way it did out of Anton. Yeah. Um, but I really like all the aspects of the song, um, and it's probably one of my more favorite on the entire album, so I give it an 8. Awesome. So now we're going to move on to the next track, Speeding Back to My Baby. <laughs> Speeding Back to My Baby was written by Ace and Jeanette Fraley. Ace plays all the guitars, Anton Figg plays the drums, David Lastly and Susan Collins sing backup. Ace wrote the song but let Jeanette write a line so she would get songwriting credit. Ace experimented with backwards tracking on the solo. The sound of the car in the song is an actual Ferrari. They had to wait for two weeks to get the recordings of the car. The opening riff of the song is actually the ending of the original solo that was nixed when Ace decided to create the backwards solo. Speeding Back to My Baby is like, it's the perfect follow-up. You go out and rip it out, rip it out, fades out, and then here comes Speeding Back to My Baby. And it opens that, that, da -na 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 and it just punches, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I like the riff. It's like, it's got that, dang, da -dang, da -dang, da -dang, da -dang, that kind of rockabilly riff to it. Um, and just, and once again, Ace's vocals is great. Um, Anton, once again, it's just something about the way his drums sound, the way he just hits a snare. Is just awesome, um, you know, and and it suffers from that 1970s bass drum. The bass drum don't hit as hard as the snare and the toms do, you know. Yeah. But um, it's still it's a great song. I like how they have the uh, the car in there towards the end, and yeah. the backwards solo is amazing. I mean, who think to record a solo a solo and then and then reverse it? You know, and I've heard speculation. I read in different places that some people say it was Eddie's idea. Some people say it was Ace says it was his idea. Eddie says it was his idea. I think this whole album is a collaboration. I give credit to Ace because Ace has produced so far on this album two really good songs. But I think if Ace would have had a different producer, this album would have sounded totally different. Yeah. Even though it was produced by Ace and Eddie. I always think that Eddie Kramer was the best producer for Kiss. They got some people claim it was Bob Ezrin. Some people claim later on it was Michael James Jackson. Um, but and you know, but I'm not going to discount either one of those producers. But Eddie Kramer, I just think was a really good producer. He produced their original demo, and you know, their original demo ended up sounding different, sounding better than what they actually ended up getting on the first Kiss album. But I love this song. I love everything about it. Um, so I'm, I'm scoring this one a 7. Okay. Here we go again with a 7 side of you. Yeah. For me to like Ace's weird solos, you would think that I would like this one a whole lot. And it's not my favorite of the lot mm -hmm. off the album. Um, and I, I don't lie, really like the songs that have... I like songs that have groove, but I don't really like the, the rocking and the rolling songs. So this one kind of falls a little flat for me. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a good intro solo. And um, I feel like it's kind of the car noises, I feel like they're a little bit of a distraction. I get why they're there, mm -hmm. um, but it kind of just catches you off guard a little bit. Right. So I'm going six on this. Okay. All right. Cool. So now we're going to move on to the next song. We're going to move on to track three, Snowblind. <laughs> Snowblind was written by Ace. Ace plays all the guitars. Anton Fig plays the drums. 
Ace uses the guitar synthesizer on this track. Now, Snowblind to me, I just love the way it comes in. Just those snares, just right at the very beginning. That blah, blah. I mean, just the way that you hear the reverb on it and everything. And and uh, and just that... Dun, 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 dun. It's got the little offbeat cowbell or little wood block in there or whatever. Um, the guitars sound great. I mean, they layered and layered and layered the guitars. The guitars just has just a, like a thickness to it. It's almost like a 1970s version of Jerry Cantrell. The way Jerry Cantrell just layers guitars deep and just keeps putting guitars and putting guitars and putting guitars. Um, plus, Ace plays the bass on this one. You know, this is a song that is basically Anton and Ace. I mean, you know, two guys making this song. Um, and it is freaking phenomenal. I mean, you know, um, hold on a second. Give me a big old swig of this here. That's good. Um, the solo on this, one of my favorite solos on the album. If not my favorite solo on the album. I love, there's a couple songs on here where they speed the song up to do the solo. And I love that they do that. Um, so, but to me, this one is out of the park. This is a 10, baby. All 10 fingers. All 10 fingers. If I can get them on the camera, all 10 fingers. So what about you? <laughs> okay. Um, so <clears throat> I'll start by saying I don't like this song as much as I remember liking it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, uh, it's not, it's not that bad. It's, it's not bad is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Um, I do like it a lot. Um, it's a, I mean, it's just a really good solid song. I, I, I really like the tone of the guitars on pretty, all these tracks really. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one, I do like the weird and it's like kind of like, it's got the chromatic that goes down for the riff and all that stuff. So that's really cool. Um, so I gave this one an eight. All right, cool. Okay, so now we're going to move on to track four, Ozone. I'm the kind of guy who likes feeling high, feeling high and dry, and I really like to fly on your guy. Ozone was written by Ace. Ace plays the electric, 12-string acoustic, and the lead guitar. Session bassist Will Lee plays bass. This is the first song Will Lee appears on, and Tom Fig plays the drum. This song has a great recording technique of layering the acoustic and the harmony guitars. This is another one of my favorite, one of my songs I like on the album a lot. Um, I like when it just starts off that dun 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 dun, dun and you hear the the acoustic, and uh, and then that riff that. I mean, it's just, just, it's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's inventive. Um, and, you know, and uh, just, and then the solo, or I mean, the uh, the solo is cool. It's almost like he's just doing scales. You know, I'm not a guitarist, but it's like he's doing a scale. There's probably some kind of scale there. A guitarist could probably tell me what it is. But um, I just like he does that little offbeat. It's like one time he starts, it's just like dun dun dun. dun. Dun, 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 and then they go back around and then it starts with two times it's like dun, 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 dun. you know what I'm talking about yeah. when he's going up and down then dun, 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 yeah, yeah. And it, there's something about that it's just the way he it's just it's a very off timing feeling song um but it's just it's an awesome song uh, it's interesting whenever the when someone's writing a song and they they reprise it uh, uh, you know if you write a verse and then you don't play it exactly the same way when you come back to the verse right and, and but it still sounds good I, I like it a lot when musicians do yeah. that the only and i score i'm gonna go ahead and say that i love this song a lot i scored a nine the only reason i don't score this song a 10 because i really like this song but the solo just kind of um the solo is okay and i mean i love the solo don't get me wrong um, but one of the things I like about it is I wish he would have done something a little different at the end. The end, it's just kind of, I don't know. It's just something about it. I always think at the end that there was something he could have done a little different rather than just kind of doing the thing and then I'm the kind of guy, you know, and just kind of fading out and everything. There's another song here on the album. I wish he would have done something a little more different at the end too. Um, but it suffers from a lot of those 1978, you know, fade outs and stuff. 
So, but um, I still love this song enough to score it a nine. All right. One of my favorite songs on the album. So, Ozone was another one of the songs that I listened to previously, and it was one of the thong- songs that I thought that I liked more. Um, and I went, I could, kind of took your approach on this one. I, I went back and I listened to some stuff that I had scored, you know, higher numbers mm-hmm. off of some older albums, mainly albums that I had scored higher. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, I like it, but do I like it that much more than this? Um, and I was, I couldn't, I couldn't tell myself honestly that I did like this song better than that song or whatever. Right. Um, but I'm just saying that to give the perspective that I do like it and it's a good song, I think, but I just kind of had to, I had to put some perspective in here and, um, I ended up giving it a seven. Okay. All right. So now we're going to move on to the last track on the first side. What's on your mind? You're breaking my heart. I'm falling apart. You make me crazy, crazy. You're breaking my heart. I don't want to start a new day, new day. I'm racking my brain. Written by Ace. Ace plays all the guitars, including the 12 string acoustic. Anton Fig plays drums. David Lastly and Susan Collins sing background. What's on your mind is one of those songs that. People say if there is any filler on the album, this is it. That this is it. That what's on your mind is a filler. You no, know, that's what people say. What do you think? Um, well, I like what's on your mind. Uh, I like how it just kind of starts off, and I like how he's got the acoustic in there. Uh, the twelve string acoustic sounds great. Um, one of the things I really like about this song is I like when he goes into that little bridge that's before the solo, yeah, the What's on break. Your Mind. I like that. Gang, yeah, yeah. Gang, gang, gang. Um, that's good. That kind of saves the song for me, and then he does that little solo that's over that little riff. Um, this is another one of those songs, I like the way it ends. I mean, I like how it just ends up that What's on Your Mind, and then the drum just, you know, at the end of yeah. it. Um, it's almost like they're closing the door, you know. That's what I always thought. They close the door. It's uh, the song's over. The side's over. Yeah, right. Um, me personally, I don't think it's a bad song. It is not as strong as the songs that was on this first track, but it's a good. It's a good song to get you prepped to flip the uh, to flip the vinyl and everything. So, but I still like it enough. I like like it, so I scored a six. Okay. I don't skip it. All right, that's fair. Um. I'm not a big fan of 12-string acoustics, and I've, I've, I'm a person that's tried, I say try, uh, tried playing one before, and they're very uncomfortable to play, um, because you now have two pressure points on one finger rather than one. So I've never been the biggest fan of the sound or the feel of a 12-string, and I think I would have preferred that Ace just did this album with a regular acoustic guitar. Um, I understand why he would, just to kind of, you know, let's toss some flavor in there um but i would have just preferred a regular acoustic that being said i like the song mm, slightly less than some of the other ones on here and i don't say that from a point where it's i don't like this song it's just that like he said they not they're not hitting this one's not hitting as hard as the other ones right um but it, it is kind of a good point where you can kind of lay back and be prepared to you know I don't know what this is like personally, but having to take the record off and pull the needle up and then go back and then see in, in my world, the next song just starts and I wouldn't <laughs> have known, I wouldn't have known here or there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could imagine, cause if you ended this album with a song, like if you ended this side with a song, like rip it out, you'd be like, where's the next one? Right. Um, so I, I can understand the need to soften up just slightly. Um, so I went six on this one. Okay, awesome. All right. So now we're going to flip the vinyl and we're going to go to the first track, New York Groove. You better believe I'm back. Back in the New York Groove. I'm back. Back in the New York Groove. I'm back. Back in the New York Groove. New York Groove was written by Russ Ballard. Ace plays rhythm and lead guitars and bass guitar. Bobby McAdams plays the top box guitar. And Tom Fig plays the drums. David Lastly and Susan Collins sing background. 
This was originally recorded by the British band Hello in 1975. Ace's version isn't much different than the original and was the only hit single from the four solo albums, reaching number 13 on the charts and spending 21 weeks on the charts. Now, New York Groove is one of those songs um, that it's, one, well, one, it's not an Ace song. It's, it's not one that he wrote. So if I bash that I don't really like the it's, writing it's, of the song, I'm not bashing Ace. Yeah. Um, this is a song I, I appreciate and I respect this song. But this song kind of, not as bad as Beth, but this song kind of falls into a Beth category for me. I know people love this song. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate mail for this, but I'm not the biggest fan of New York Groove. Um, but having said that, I like the wah that he uses on it, even though Ace is not the biggest fan of using that kind of wah. Um, he's not the biggest fan of it. Uh, I like the beam that he does. But this song, to me, it's just, it never changes. It's like, it's got that clum, 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 clum. And, and it keeps that beat, even through the whole thing. The solos, many years since, or the verses, many years since I was here. And then the ver and the, sol uh, the, the chorus, I'm back, damn, back in the New York. It never changes. It doesn't really have a solo. I mean, it has a solo, but... Not really what I'd classify as a solo, um, but um, it just it just keeps that same. It's almost it might, it's always reminded me people, of people marching. You but know? really, because uh, what I was about to say was it reminds me of someone like walking down the sidewalk in New York. Yeah, yeah, it has that two, 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 and everything. And I understand why this was a big hit. You know, um, it was a big hit for Ace, and I appreciate it. I'm glad it was a big hit for Ace and everything. But um, having said that, I score uh, New York Groove a six. It's not a song that I skip, and it's not a song that I don't like. Um, I like like it, you know. Um, but you know, I'm by the end of it, I'm like, okay, let's get to the next song. Yeah. So what about you? I'm gonna have an unpopular opinion here and say that I don't like this song at all, at no. all. I, I loathe this song. I skipped it. I listened to it on my first, completely on my first listen through, and then you, just, you, you, you might just, you might need to take a drink of this. No, we can pour that out for this one. How about that? The blue Kool Aid. You ain't gonna drink the blue Kool Aid. No, not on this one. Sorry. It was a commercial success for a reason. Um, I don't like. And I'm glad you said that. It is the most unace song on the album. It is the most unace. Yes. It is not his character. No. Ozone, Snowblind, Rip It Out. <clears throat> that's Those, Ace. That's Ace. You know, this is not Rocket Ride. This is not Shock Me. This is an homage to his hometown, which I understand, but it is but it is a very unace song. Speaking of him writing a song about New York, topical. Right. Uh, Bronx Boy. Bronx Boy. Yeah. If you haven't heard Bronx Boy, check it out. Uh, Released yeah. on his birthday. Happy belated birthday, Ace. Yeah, just a, not too long ago, about a week ago. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm not even going to try and justify anything I like about this song at all. I give it a two. Okay. Wow. Low. That's low. Man, people are going to hate you. But oh well, that's our opinion, so. I don't like it. What are you going to do? Would you rather me lie <laughs> about me liking it? So we're going to go on to the next song. We're going to go on to I'm in Need of Love. I'm in Need of Love. I'm in Need of Love was written by Ace. Ace plays the rhythm and the lead guitars. This is the second song that Will Lee returns to play bass. And Tom Fig plays drums. This is one of the demos that Ace recorded in early April of 1978 with Anton Fig. Now, I'm in Need of Love is, again, one of my other favorite songs on the album. Um, it's got the fast guitar solo in it, and it's very... I've, I've heard this song get criticized for its very simple lyrical content, because he's just basically saying, I'm in need of love, I want some love, so give me some. Um, it's very... It's a very simple song, uh, lyrical-wise, lyrical content, even structurally... It's not the most complicated song, but damn, it still rocks. I mean, to me, it just still rocks. I think just, we, we had 
talked slightly about this, and you said that some people consider this a filler song. Yeah, some people consider I'm in need of love a filler song. I'm in need of love is not a filler song for me. Um, I love, and it's got the fast guitar solo in it where they speed, where they go into I double like that. time. Yeah, that's, that's, I like um, that. Lot. The, the, the solo on this, like I said, the solo for this and the solo for um, Ozone are probably, oh, they're right there together as being my favorite solos on the album. Um, I lo- Once again, the drums sound great. The guitars sound great. Ace's vocals sound great. Um, I like in one part of it, he's like, he goes, you got to at the very end of yeah. it and everything. He's like, hits that real that high ace, note. that little cheeky note he does. But now he does that during a part that I really don't like. When he comes out of the solo, he goes back into, um, he kind of goes back into the verse again. I want some love. I need some love and everything. But then he just kind of keeps repeating that as he goes out. I would have liked to have gone into the ver- to the to the chorus one more time. And then maybe tried to figure out a way to end it after that. I don't like that he kind of goes into, and they kind of fade out, him just kind of repeating, and he starts doing that, that guitar there at the very end. And like I said, this this song I would have scored it a 10. Had it not had those little things that I really didn't like about it, but still, it's a 9, baby. Kool-Aid drinking continues. It is a 9. The filler song considered by many is a nine to me. So what about you, Steve-O? Man, we're full of unpopular opinions today. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think the most redeeming quality for this song to me is when they go into the double time for the solo. Um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kinda with the majority on this one. I do feel like the song's a little simple, a little too simple. Um, but I also have to give credit where it's due. When you write an album in two months... Not everyone, every, not every song is going to be behind me in Rap City. Mm-hmm. So I mean, there has to be, there has to be that one that you throw together in your smoke break. Mm-hmm. And and this, I think this is one of them. And I'm not critiquing it from a point where I was like, oh, I know, no Ace could do better. I'm just going saying, I don't like this song very much. Had Ace Matt had more time, and not been in such a crunch, you know, we could have had, probably had another song that's more like Rip It Out or Snowblind. Rather than this. Right. Um, that being said, I gave this a six. <clears throat> okay, six. I want, do want to mention something I meant to mention on mine. And during that during that double time solo, one thing I love about that solo and shows shows I'm not just an Ace fanboy, um, I actually went and I, when I did my research, I was like, because I knew Ace played bass on a lot of on a lot of the songs on this album. But the bass lines and some of the bass licks that's going on under that solo, you know, during that when the the stuff that Will Lee is playing. Yeah. And Will Lee is actually, for those of you who don't know, and I don't know if you know or not, but Anton Figg and Will Lee are both part of, they went on to be part of, I think it was David Letterman's house band. Um, I think it's, a, but I know it may be David Letterman. I don't know if it's, I think it is David Letterman. But they, the Tonight Show house band, I, whoever, I, I don't think David Lehrman's doing it now, whoever's doing the Tonight Show now, I don't watch, maybe Jimmy Kimmel or Richie, Richie, whatever his name is. I don't watch late night TV, so I don't know. So I'm ignorant, so you can chastise me in the comments. But, um, you know, that, that that's an awesome part of that sol- the solo and everything. Yeah. So, so let's go ahead and move on to the next song. Let's go ahead and move on to Wiped Out. Wiped Out was written by Ace Frehley and Anton Figg. Ace plays the rhythm and the lead guitars. Willie returns for the last time to play bass. Anton Figg plays drums. Ace wrote the riff and one verse while in the studio with Anton. Anton then wrote the rest of the song, and then Ace made some additional changes. Ace used the same old Vox device for the Y effect on the song and the solo that he first used on Rocket Ride, although he's not a big fan of it. Wiped Out is one of those songs that everybody is a big fan of, too. It's like, you know, everybody, they talk about this album, they talk about Rip It Out, out New York Groove, Wiped, Wiped Out. out. That's, that's basically the three songs that um, everybody says is so great about this album. And on this one, I have a tendency to agree. I really like Wiped Out. Um, I think I used to be a bigger fan of Wiped Out. I remember, I remember loving Wiped Out as a kid. I think 
my affinity for it has dwindled over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like the verse. I like where they go and that that more that heavy that da na 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 na. Um, you know, this is an ace song. You know, yeah. I mean, this is a space ace song and everything. Um, the lyrics are kind of you know fun and everything. Talking about going to a party and getting drunk. I like that line. Next thing I know, I looked at you. I was blind as a skunk. I mean, it's simple, fun lyrics. It's Ace having fun. And uh, I did read one thing in one of the articles I read that Ace, whenever he got into the studio to record his solo, when he got in there to record the album, he started off with the same technique as he did with Shock Me. He wanted to lay on the floor and record his vocals on the floor. And Eddie originally let him do it. But and so Ace would lay in there. He would ha- have a have a that have a microphone down over him. He would usually have a bottle of champagne in one hand, and he'd have the lyric sheet in the other hand because he liked to read his lyrics as he was singing them. And they said over time, over a couple songs, he came up off the floor, started singing, standing up, and they said that his confidence in his vocals grew to be equivalent with his confidence in his guitar playing by the time he got to the end of this album. And I think this album for Ace truly, truly did what the solo albums, what they were trying to accomplish was letting each member grow and experience things and and basically define who they are to the fans aside from the, the other musicians in KISS to be a true solo album. And Ace truly, I mean, I guess he's been pretty good at it because Ace is still... I mean, he's got a new album like Stephen was talking out. He just put out a song, Bronx Boy. He's got a new album getting ready to come out this summer. So Ace is still here in 2018, still putting out um, good music, still putting out music. So, so, but I give Wiped Out an eight. Okay. I like the song a lot. My only problem is, is they do that weird delay thing with his vocals over the chorus, yeah. and that honestly kills wiped it. Wiped out, wiped out, wiped out. Yeah. That, that honestly kills it for me. Right. For for whatever reason, whenever I would listen to it, I was just like, "This is." I would prefer for him just to sing it with no delay, right. or anything. Um, but you know, it's a pretty good song. It, it's it's decent, it, and I think it kind of stands amongst some of the lower scoring ones I have on the on the album. So I give it a six. Okay, all right. So we're gonna move on with the last track. We're gonna move on to Fractured Mirror. Fracture Mirror was written by Ace. It's an instrumental song in which Ace would play all the guitars. Carl Tallarico plays the drums. This is the only track on the album that Anton Figg did not play on. Bill Bear Seinman played the bell at the beginning of the track. Ace used an old Gibson electric double neck, a rare one with a six-string neck and a mandolin neck. He tuned the mandolin neck to open E and then turned the pickups all the way up on it. Then he played on the six-string side with the pickups turned off and let the sound resonate through the body and to the open-end strings to be picked up on the mandolin pickups. He then stood as close to his Marshall stack as he could, just to the point that it would begin to feed back, and then they recorded that sound. Now, anybody who's watched any of my videos, they know how I feel about instrumental songs. That instrumental songs usually don't carry very much weight with me because that's just my personal preference. Um, instrumental songs, although I appreciate the music, and Fractured Mirror is one of those. This is a master recording, I think. I mean, Ace was experimentally, experimenting. He's got the guitar synthesizer in there, and he's playing almost probably every possible guitar you can play in there. And they're layering, and he's bringing in all these different melodies and these different octaves and everything. Um, and... You know, it is a great, great song. It's a, it starts a trend that he would continue to follow, putting an instrumental on every one of his solo albums. After that, um, Fracture Two, Fracture Three, Fracture Quantum. You know, I mean, he he just kept Fractured going and everything. But you know, and even though I'm drink the Ace Kool Aid, um, I don't score this song very high because I'm not a big fan of instrumentals. I have skipped this song 
um, several times just because, especially if I'm listening to a song, like I found listening to it in my car on my CD player, um, just getting ready to listen through it again to, to do my review for it. A lot of times I'd let, I'd get fractured about halfway through it and then I'd skip and go back to rip it out because, you know, it's just, okay, I know what I need to know about it. I know how I feel about it. So, but having said that, even though I skip it, I respect it enough that I'm going to score it a five. Okay. I like it as far as instrumental goes. A five for an instrumental is almost equivalent to a ten for a non-instrumental song for me. You have to understand that. That saying, "Oh, you scoring that song a five? Five is good for me because if I didn't like it, it'd probably be a two or a three, maybe even a one." You know, but what about you, Mr. Instrumental? So you guys all know that I love instrumental music a whole lot. And I could listen to it for a long, long, long time. But, but, there's one thing that I feel like is required from an instrumental song. And that's variety. I don't feel like this song has a whole lot of variety. The, the kind of instrumental music that I'm interested in is you you've almost got a different riffs being you know the song's not really repeated i feel like this song's a little bit repeated and while i do ha like a whole lot how it's recorded and it's very interesting to hear i'm not i there's just something about it i'm not a big fan of it and i i almost feel like it is kind of sacrilege for a kiss song uh to be you know, instrumental. It feels kind of weird. It feels out of place. Um, and this is going to come as a surprise, but I actually gave it a four. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, the only other instrumental Kiss song up to this point, I believe, is um, is Love Thing from Kiss. Yeah. And a lot of people don't like that song. They don't like Love Thing from Kiss. We, didn't, didn't, even, we, we didn't, didn't even touch it. Yeah. So... Um, I think while I scored Love Thing from Kiss on the first album, I think I scored it pretty low, like a four or something like that. That was before you were viewing with oh, me. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's basically uh, that's basically what we feel like for the album. And so what I want to do real quick is I'm going to talk about, I'm going to run over my songs again real quick, and then we'll do my rankings, and then we'll have final thoughts, okay? So, um I scored Rip It Out a 7, Speeding Back to My Baby a 7, Snow Blind a 10, Ozone a 9, What's On Your Mind a 6, New York Groove a 6, I'm in Need of Love a 9, Wiped Out 8, and Fractured Mirror a 5. That's a total score for me of 67, which equals 7.44. And uh, for me, I gave Rip It Out a 8, Speeding Back to My Baby a 6. Snowblind at 8, Ozone a 7, What's on Your Mind a 6, New York Brew 2, I'm in Need of Love 6, Wiped Out 6, and Fractured Mirror 4, which gives me a total of 53 over 9 tracks equals 5.9. Okay, so where does that put this album with my rankings? Because I'm going to rank the solo albums in with my other albums. So Alive 2 stays at top with... 7.75. Ace of Solo slides into the second spot at 7.44. Rock and Roll Over is third, 7.1. Then Alive, 7.06. Love Gun, 6.9. Destroyer, 6.77. Dress to Kill, 6.3. The Debut at 5.9. Harder Than Hell at 5.7. And Gene Solo remains at the bottom at 5.55. So, um, Stephen, what's your final thoughts on the album? My overall statement for the album is... I feel like there's a lot of self-honesty in this album. Ace is writing the music that Ace wants to write. Now, I have a question for you. We kind of did this on Gene's album. How many of these could be Kiss songs? How many could be Kiss songs? Uh, let's see. Um, Rip It Out could have been a Kiss song. Um, I think Speeding Back to My Baby could have been a Kiss song. Um, I could hear Speeding Back to My Baby being on Love Gun. 
Uh, I could hear Rip It Out being on Rock and Roll Over. Um, I think out of the out of the songs, out of all the songs on here, I think probably Rip It Out and Speeding Back to My Baby, to me, would fit on a Kiss album. So what about you? I would agree with those. Those are the two that I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but had they been produced as Kiss songs, I know that they don't do this often, um, especially Gene and Paul. They don't trade songs with each other. It kind of happens sometimes, but more or less it's a producer going, forcing a hand. Um, I feel like Speed Back to My Baby could have been a good Paul vocal song. I think Speed Back to My Baby could have been a good Paul vocal song. I, I do agree with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those were the two songs that I were going to say. Okay. Um, but to finish my statement, <clears throat> I feel like you know, there's a lot of self-honesty in this album. Um, and I didn't score it as high as I thought I would. And because I, I kind of came into this and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, Ace is a solo album, so great. And maybe in comparison to the other solo albums, but I can't say I can't say that I enjoyed listening to this more than I did Rock and Roll Over or Live 2. So you think Ace is a solo album, well, we'll see when we get done, but yeah. you think that Ace is a solo album may possibly be the best of the four, but does Ace's solo album make a good Kiss album? I don't think so. Okay. I don't. I mean, it's marketed as one, but I don't think so. I, I think, we, you know, we kind of have to take all these at face value, and, and they aren't Kiss albums. Um, but it's just, I came in with higher expectations, and I was kind of let down. Yeah. Um, my final thoughts on the album, looking at my notes here, my final thoughts on the album was that Ace did, uh, just like with Gene so far, Ace did something that was true to him. So that's me and, me and you agree with that. He did. He made the album he wanted to make. that he wanted to make without the influence of Paul and Gene. He made the album that he wanted to make. Uh, I was totally impressed with the fact that it's funny, there's a book out there that I have yet to read it. I've seen excerpts of it, but it's a book about the making of the solo albums. And Paul and Gene both approached Chase that ahead of time and said, you're going to be okay making your own album, Mace? We'll help you if you need help. We'll, yeah. we'll help you. We're here for you to help you. Yeah. You know. And Ace, not only did he make an, a kick-ass album, but he did it with what? the least amount of people that any other, any other Kiss member did with their solo albums and arguably the most commercially successful um so he did it with the least amount of people and so to go in to go into having the confidence to where you're laying on the floor when you're singing your vocals to making the album that he made um is just phenomenal to me um the only way I had a note on here, the only way this album could have been better is if one of the songs had not been on it and actually, and Rocket Ride would have actually been on this album. Because Rocket Ride, he was kind of saving it at the time to go on his solo album, uh, but they ended up using it on Kiss Alive 2 as one of the studio tracks. Rocket Ride would have been awesome on here. It belongs on it. I mean, if you play, if you play like a little, bit, a little experiment for you, play about two or three tracks off of... Um, off of Ace's solo album, and then throw Rocket Ride in the middle of the playlist, it fits. It fits. It, it would it would have worked. Um, and my last notes is like I just said, Ace kicked major ass on this album. Major ass. So um, I think, is am I going to like, we still have yet to review um, Peter's next and then Paul's. Am I going to like Peter or Paul's better after I rate them? I don't know. I've not done it yet. So we'll see. But um, that's our final thoughts, and that's what we think about Ace. If you hate us, leave us some comments below. Uh, you know, the, the hateful comments don't hurt. Um, it's our opinion, and this is just all in fun and everything. It's our opinion, and we know that we have a tendency to be confrontational sometimes. Uh, but, you know, I want to know your opinions. I want to know what you think. Yes, what? please. If you are yeah. someone who absolutely loves New York Groove, please feel free to explain to me why. <laughs> or, um, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, address that one to Stephen. Uh, and, you know, but we appreciate you watching. We're going to go ahead and close this out. We appreciate you watching. Be sure to click on my face. It's probably going to be somewhere right in here. And be sure to subscribe, like, comment. And as always, we'll see you next time.